presidential pit stop, the surprise visit to a local restaurant by the leader of the free world. And it is official, the 2023 Rose Parade Grand Marshal is... NBC4 News at 4 starts now. And so at 4 o'clock today, we begin with the L.A. City Council scandal and continued calls for resignation. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Colleen Wiggins. And I'm Kathy Barr. Michael and Carolyn are off today. NBC4's John Caddy's Climax starts our team coverage from downtown with today's new developments. John? Yeah, so there's a lot of business that needs to be done, city business that needs to be done. It is on hold today. Tomorrow's council meeting canceled because the acting president says that he needs resignations first. We're still waiting on word. One resignation down, two to go. So says acting L.A. Council President Mitch O'Farrell, who says two days of raucous protests that kept the council from conducting business this week can't continue. Today announcing he's canceled tomorrow's council meeting. The people's business uh, cannot be, be conducted until we have these next two resignations. Nuri Martinez submitted her resignation yesterday. O'Farrell today appointed Sharon So, the city's chief legislative analyst, as the caretaker of the 6th Council District, a temporary and non-voting member of council until a special election can be called to elect a new council member. Approving timesheets, uh, making sure correspondence is, is uh, addressed, and making sure that the needs of the district are still addressed. As for council members Gil Cedillo and Kevin DeLeon, silence so far. The two were also overheard in a leaked audio recording from a year ago using racist slurs during a redistricting meeting at the LA Federation of Labor. The labor leader on the tapes, Ron Herrera, was the first to resign earlier this week, followed by former council president Martinez. It's, it's heavy, you know. These are some of the people that I've admired growing up. This is just... It's very heartbreaking. Eunice Hernandez, who defeated Cedillo in the primary election in June, says she's ready to step in early if he resigns. And since we won in the primary, uh, we've been working towards building up our team. We've had over 25 community meetings. And so we're ready to go. As soon as they're ready for us, we're ready to jump in. She was inside the council's horseshoe Tuesday when leadership asked both Cedillo and De Leon to leave the meeting so the crowd would calm down. Neither De Leon or Cedillo have made any comments publicly since their initial written apologies, and neither have responded to requests from NBC4 to go on the record. He didn't hold anyone accountable. He's not holding himself accountable. Hernandez says she's angry, but has a message for the rest of the city when new leadership moves into city council's chambers. They know that there's folks that are coming in that are willing to build bridges that are going to do that labor to not leave people behind, and it's going to take some time, but with patience, uh, their support, and their engagement, we can really move forward. So again, council meeting for tomorrow has been canceled. The next one is going to be on Tuesday, and then council members say that they are going to move to censure both Cedillo and De Leon, effectively taking away their power on city council. Reporting live outside City Hall, I'm John Kennedy's Klimak, NBC4 News. John, thank you. NBC4's Gordon Tugamasi was live at Kevin DeLeon's office in Boyle Heights, where protesters are expected to arrive shortly. Gordon, anyone there yet? Yeah, they have arrived here, Kathy. In fact, uh, Councilman Kevin DeLeon actually has a satellite office in this building, which is called the Boyle Heights City Hall. It's a reason this uh, coalition of groups has gathered here uh, to basically demand his resignation. Organizers telling us they will presenting, be presenting these boxes. You can see them right here on the sidewalk, which are symbolic. They're moving boxes telling him he needs to move his stuff out and leave immediately. They hope to deliver that to that office later. Later on today. Now, earlier we spoke uh, with somebody who agrees with them that a resignation should come from Kevin DeLeon. We spoke with Mayor Garcetti. Have you spoken to Mr. DeLeon? We've, I've spoken to each of these individuals, yes. Mayor Garcetti this morning speaking to reporters after a voice to the chorus of disapproval. Our city feels broken, and this will end with their departure. The city charter does not allow council members to be removed, he told us, unless there's a criminal charge, which is not the case. But stripping them of committee positions appears to be the only logical course of action, barring a recall election. Between now and when the next, next council comes in, in mid-December, there isn't that sort of time. 
So back here live where you can see this uh, little rally has begun loudly here on the sidewalk with these folks calling for Kevin DeLeon's resignation earlier today. We should point out I called a press aide to Mr. DeLeon for comment. He said he would let us know if any statements will be made. So far, we have not received a message back from him. And all of Kevin DeLeon's social media stopped posting shortly before the scandal began. Reporting live from Boyle Heights, Gordon Tugumatsu, NBC4 News. Gordon, thank you for that. NBC4 political contributor Dr. Ange Marie Hancock joins us now. Uh, first of all, welcome. What do you think the plan is for the two council members who haven't resigned at this point? How long can the council hold out? You know, certainly the council cannot hold out for long without conducting the business of the city. So in many ways, what's going on is that these two city council members are kind of holding the city hostage, and, and forgive the kind of extreme language, but when you're talking about the number of different things that a city as big as Los Angeles has to do every single day, it's really, really important that that get done. And it hasn't gotten done for going on a week now um, because these two council members refuse to resign. Does the council have the option of uh, meeting behind closed doors? And if so, does that create a whole host of other problems? The council really does not. A majority of the council cannot meet via uh, um, uh, cannot meet via any sort of um, situation where they're behind closed doors due to the Brown Act, which is a statewide law that prevents exactly that from happening. Um, so, with regard to that, if they try that, that's not going to be effective. And it speaks to this. How big of an impact do you think this scandal has had on public confidence in political leaders? Wouldn't that just add to the problem? This has really eroded, I think, public confidence. I think the protests that you're seeing, I think the fact that work is not getting done. Remember, we have a mayoral race going on, and people are wondering what our city is going to start doing, you know, come the end of 2022 and early 2023. And, you know, there's very little preparation that can happen for that kind of transition when everybody is focused on this situation and the business of the city not being able to get done in the way that it should on the city council side. Dr. Ange Marie Hancock, as always, thanks so much for your insight. We appreciate it. Okay. Take care. We will update you, keep updating you, in fact, on the scandal and the fallout here on the NBC4 News and on NBCLA.com. We'll also send out any breaking alerts directly to your phone through the NBCLA app. Up next at 4, the final January 6th hearing before...